from Television City in Hollywood. <laughs> it's a sunny and chair show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sonny and Cher. and welcome to the Sunny and Cher Show. We're happy to be here. And uh, to be really honest with you, um, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, really. That's right. All of you with, with those thousands of letters, that really did it for us. That did the trick, didn't it, Cher? Those letters got them. I don't know how you had time to write them all. Running around all the little uh, different no, mailboxes, she, that's a put on. mailing she, she's, them. She's putting me on. That, that's a lie, Cher. It's not a lie. Yeah, that's a lie, and you know no. it. You shouldn't tell lies. Remember what happens to your nose when you tell lies? <laughs> I, I look like Barbara Streisand. Anyway. <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, I want to, before we go on, I want to say something about our summer show. Um, we, we, we did a summer show, and, and some time has passed now, and I, I've had time to take a good, critical, objective look at what we did. Yeah. And uh, I must say, you know, uh, this might sound like hindsight to you, but I must say, actually, that uh, I was sensational. <laughs> you shouldn't be so hard on yourself, Sonny. I know. Really. No, 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 but the point is, the point is, uh, what I wanted to make was this. The audience really did, they, they loved us a lot. And you know what they liked the best? No. This, this is, they liked when, when, you <laughs> when you tried to put me down yeah. and, and, and I'd play the fool and then I'd come back at you with my raper sharp wit. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, when, when I'd come back at you, remember that? I remember when you played the fool, but... <laughs> no, 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 
don't pay any attention to her. She's, she's a little upset because she didn't get what she wanted for Christmas. Honey, I, kn I understand why you're disappointed. I know. I, I, I know how much you wanted to go to Hawaii, but, well, I just couldn't afford a round-trip ticket for the two of us. Who said anything about the two of us? <laughs> Who said anything about round trip? <laughs> No, we, we had, uh, in spite of everything, we had a, I, I hope you had a nice Christmas. We, we had a wonderful Christmas. Christmas was really nice. My mother cooked. It was, my mother cooked for us, and uh, she really knows how to stuff a turkey, doesn't she? Yeah, straighten her mouth. <laughs> anyway, we did have a good Christmas. As far as, as far as my mother's concerned, Christmas is really a big event, and... Uh, as far as your mother's concerned, getting out of a chair is a big event. <laughs> Getting out of the bathtub is a four-star spectacular. Sometimes, you know, you get you get a little rough. That wasn't nice. You're, you're, you're a little too rough on my mother once in a while. It wasn't nice when my mother came over to the house either and, and, and you asked her to be our Christmas tree. I, she knew I wasn't serious. I was just joking around. You know me. Yeah, well, why... Laugh a minute. <laughs> Why'd you make her stand in the corner then? In, in a bucket. With her feet in the water. Well, I was afraid she'd dry out and drop wrinkles all over my rug. No, 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 that's, that's, that's not funny. No, wait. No, no, no. No, wait a minute, that, that isn't funny. I, just, I want to clear one more. Another thing, one, one more thing. You're not gonna get my dad to play Santa Claus anymore either. Yeah. He's, my father's getting too old. He's much too old to carry a great big, a great big old lumpy bag on top of his shoulders like that. That's why I told your mother to stand in the corner. <laughs> You're bad, Sam. You're bad. Oh. Without love, I'd never find a way to ups and downs of every single day. At night until you say, honey, all I ever need is you. Here we go! All I ever need is you. <laughs> and now in keeping with the fantastic success of Les Crane's recitation of the poem Desiderata, I'm proud to present something very unique, a brand new poem written, set to music, and produced for television by my husband. It's simply called What is Life? Ladies and gentlemen, Sonny Bono. What is life? Life is the beginning of an experience. It's a precious moment in time. Life is a spark in the universe, a light shaft revealing you. Life brings momentary meaning that makes the color of life. When you live life, make sure that it is real life that you are living. Because only the sparrow of unhappiness can flap up its wings of the golden glory and strike down the meaning of the given event. What is life? You ask me, what is life? I ask you, what is life? And what is life, ladies and gentlemen? Think. Think. It 
can mean so much to you. It can do so... It, it can... It... They... What would... Well, poetry is not my forte anyway. <laughs> oh, really? Sharon insisted that I do this poetry thing. That's her fault, not mine. <laughs> no, it is. Right now, I, I, I'd like to do what I really do the best. I, I, I have a thing, and I do it well, and I shouldn't have let her talk me into it. The little old Bono is going to do what he does best. I am going to sing. <laughs> For better or for worse, till death do us part. What was I thinking of? <laughs> That's all right, sweetheart. I love you anyway. Like last year, we ah. had this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my buxom beauty. Beauty? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who stands before you? An Italian Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look at these robes. Look at this dress. Do you think. Do you think. What do you think? <laughs> Do you know who stands in front of you? A man without a beard. <laughs> what? What's, 
That's easy for you to say, but I'm the greatest king that ever lived. And I... That's mine. And I would not hesitate from removing your head. What do you think about that, Anne Boleyn? I got it. You're Minnesota fast. No. <laughs> Scoff! Scoff! Laugh! Cast aspersions. <laughs> I'm the only Henry VIII. Ho! 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. Ho! <laughs> Which one of you is Sonny? I'm, I'm, I'm Sonny. You're, you're Sonny, you're yeah. sure of that? Yeah. Okay, I have a warrant. Incognito, uh, I'm yeah, Sonny. I'm, yeah, I noticed. Uh, this is a warrant for you. It's a 504. What's a 504? Well, it's a citation for overacting in front of 22 million people. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry about that. Matter of fact, you do look like an Italian Zeppelin. Let's go play. <laughs> If Sonny gets one more ticket, they're gonna take away his mustache. Nefertiti, my queen, I am Procious, the official taster to your mighty husband, the King Tut. <laughs> That's not right, dummy. <laughs> anyway, I am... <laughs> Sometimes I'm the taster to your royal... I'm the official taster to your husband, mighty King Tut. Far out. Yes, and nothing touches his lips that doesn't touch me. mine first. Nothing. Nothing gets in there. <laughs> Terrific. Yes, well. <clears throat> well, not bad. Not bad. A little Bernays sauce would go good, but... Not bad. Hey, your royal tutness! Come and get it. It's about ready now. Thank you, atrocious. <laughs> ah, my beautiful Nefertiti, my wonderful queen, I have waited long to see you. Mm. <laughs> Well, now that you are here, O oh King, let's not waste time. Let us make up for all those days, not to mention the night. No, it is too late, my love. My strength ebbs, and I feel the shadow of death approaching. Death? You, but you're so young, so virile. Yes, I'm young and virile on the outside, but on the inside, Egyptian dry rot. Well, there's a lot of that going around. I know. That's why I have made arrangements for my boy. It's affected my mouth. That's why I have made arrangements for my royal burial. First, I shall be anointed with the rarest of oils from the Nile Delta. Shape up. Then I shall be wrapped in the finest of linens, and my body will be sealed in the largest of the pyramids, in the center of the twisted labyrinth, with no way in and no way out. And according to our ancient laws, you, my love, will be buried with me. You're a 
out of your cockamamie mind. <laughs> my name and vamping's my game. Before you are executed, do you have any final words? Yes, I never met a man I didn't like. Tell me, why have you ruined so many of my men? I'm sorry. <laughs> why have you ruined so many of my men? They gave you everything. They didn't give me everything. There's one thing they didn't give me. I thought you'd never say that. <laughs> Ashtin! Ashtin? <laughs> First him and then Ashtin. <laughs> Before you were shot, I am strangely curious. What magical, mystical power do you have over men? I'm one heck of a kisser. Schnitzdut! Schnitzdut? In that case, before you go, kiss me! My pleasure. Mm. Fire in! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I never knew it could be like this. I can't wait for a second date. <laughs> Have I? Sadie, you know it's me, the parson. Hey, parson. Why don't you come with me, parson? I know a place where we can get some booze, little action, a lot of action. Some swingers? Put down that book. 40 piece orchestra and half the Seventh Fleet. Oh, Sadie, you know I hate those waterfront dives. What waterfront dives? I'm talking about my room. Oh, Sadie. Oh, Sadie. So shameless, Sadie. How can you talk like that? You're always thinking of sin. Why don't you think of your fellow man? Why don't you do something good? Why, why can't you be good, Sadie? I am good. You see that man over there, that shattered hulk of a man? That poor creature, Sadie. Do you see him, that fallen angel? You mean that drunken bum? Yes, yes. That, too. Why don't we try to help him? Why should I? He's doing a pretty good job of getting drunk by himself. Come, my child. We'll go together and we'll save him from the demon rum. I've come to help you, brother. And I've come to help you, brother, too. 
too. <laughs> I don't know if I can help you anymore now, brother. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Tell me, son, what drove you to drink? Well, it's a long, sad story. Have a drink. First, I lost my job. Mm. Then I lost my wife. Sad. Then I lost my fortune. Then I found my wife again. <laughs> then I lost my house. Then I lost my wife. Then I lost my job. But I forgot where I parked my car. <laughs> and I found my wife again. <laughs> what a sad, sad story. Well, Parson, I've saved him from the demon rum. How did you do that, Sadie? I got the bottle. Come on, let's go save somebody else. <laughs>
next guest is one of my favorite comedians, a really a talented performer, a versatile actor, and one of the funniest guys around. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harvey Corman. Hey! It's great having you here, Harvey. Oh, for sure. <laughs> no, really, no, no. Uh, but uh, before we go any further, uh, I want to ask you something. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes when I'm on the uh, stage with Cher, uh, yeah. once in a while, well, occasionally, uh, she'll get the better of me once in a while. It, it, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, those things happen. So. I know, but uh, I don't mind. I don't mind. That's, the, that's not the point. It, yeah. it makes Cher look bad. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, see, I, I slip like that once ah, in a while. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and see. I was thinking, I was, I, I've seen Carol in your work. You know, yeah, Carol? You, yeah, Burnett. You oh, Bur Burnett, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, you're tall, and I'm really tall. No, and I was, you guys are terrific. That, thank you, thank no, you very much. And sir. I mentioned it for another reason. I was, yeah. I was thinking maybe as a friend and as a buddy, uh, you might help me out. You, you know, you know those little zingers pretty well. You have those one-liners right up your sleeve. Oh, wow, well, wait yeah, a minute, no, well, but listen, no, no, if you want a comedian like that, you need a, a Don Rickles or a Joey Bishop. You know, I, I don't really do that kind of thing. Oh, right? come on, Harvey. I, I know you can do anything you want well, to. Okay, Sonny, I'll do the best I can. Okay, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll pretend to be Cher, and uh, you pretend to be Sonny, okay? <laughs> All right, now, okay? Now you ask me a question. Just ask me any question that you would ask Cher, okay? Okay. Hi, Cher. Um, what's for dinner? Aha, uh -huh. you see, that's your first mistake. <laughs> what did I do? Well, you did what I told you to do. Never do what I tell you to do. You see, that way you won't be put down. Oh, okay, Understand? okay. All right. There, you see, you did it again. <laughs> you're not listening to me, Sonny. I, I don't think you're ready for advanced comedy. First, first I tell you to do something and you do it. Then I tell you not to do what I tell you to do and you do it all over again. Now, will you do what I tell you to do and don't do what I tell you to do? Okay, Harvey. Right. Not again! God couldn't have made you short and stupid. <laughs> Wasn't it? Where that does was... it say you hit me? <laughs> no, that was, that was a good, I, that, that was a great line. I can use that and share. No, rule number two, never compliment the guy who's insulting. Oh, oh, that's a great one. Oh, that's great, Harvey. That's, <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> Who would have thought it possible for a man to be sh so short and so stupid and so dumb? Stand up when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Standing. Rule number three, don't answer back. I won't, I'm sorry. He did it again! <laughs> what is it with you anyway? You broke three rules. You care to try for four? Do you want to stay here and keep the insults? And go home. <laughs> Blew that. All right. I want to tell you something. You're making me crazy. You've got a boil on your neck. <laughs> Listen, I saw your summer show. You know what the best joke you had was? You. And you know what your second best joke was? You. <laughs> Can you hear me down there, Toulouse? <laughs> I can't take any more of this, you understand? Rule number five, I quit. You're making me crazy, little twerp. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> if I can do that to Harvey Corman, I can destroy anybody. <laughs> Cher! Cher! Come here now. It came upon a midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold was written long ago about a kingdom on a mountain and the valley folk below on a mountain was a treasure buried deep beneath the stone and the valley people swore that they'd have it for their own up the hill asking for the buried treasure tons of gold for which they kill came an answer from the kingdom with our brothers we will share all the secrets of our mountain all the riches buried there Was all it said about the sad and lonely plains they bend on hovering wings? The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. I'm Freeman King, your culture announcer, for our series entitled, The Operas Nobody Does Anymore. Tonight's opera was first performed in Venice in 1641 and received absolutely no applause. <laughs> Not a clap. <laughs> Nothing. And tonight you'll see why. So sit back with myself and my parents Spot and Rover <laughs> as we enjoy the opera All in the Familiars. The role of Archibald Bunker will be sung by the incomparable Robert Morell. And as they say at the Metropolitan Opera, we gonna whip it on you. <laughs>
Arab. And I'm an Italian. And I am a German. And I am a Jew. I'm a Negro. I'm Indian. And I'm a minority person, too. <laughs> Archie Bunker now. H how can you tell? He just ran into a foreign car. <laughs> Edith, I'm the boss around here. I'll say something stupid. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I am the head of the Bunker family. Gloria and Michael, Edith and me. The O's is always welcome to come round. Long as you ain't black or brown. <laughs> Will any color do? Red, white, and blue. In just a few. We are the kids in the Bunker family. Gloria and Mike, Meathead and me. We're the youth who's always on the left. That's cause I'm always right. Make that the far right. <laughs> Our family doesn't fight. Unless it's day. Unless it's day or It's me, Father McCloskey, from St. Malachy's for just down the street. As you know, we're closing our parish here and moving the church across town. I'm taking up a collection to help pay the moving costs. Sure, and a good cause it is indeed. Here's five dollars. Ah, bless you, my boy. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah. you're going to move the church and the parish house and everything, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Faith, no, just the church. The parish house we sold. To the Black Panthers. <laughs> Shalom. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm from the Jewish and the Christian Cooperation League. Would you like to pledge $10 to plant a Christmas tree in Israel? I wouldn't plant $10 to plant Georgie Jessel in Israel. He said, I know. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Uh, by the way, how about $5 to plant a Christmas tree in George Jessel? Oh, okay. How about a Hanukkah bush in Jan Pierce, please? <laughs> Just perfect. I got Irish beat rattlers and Yiddish poppers at the front door. I got jungle bunnies moving down a block, and I got a walking Polish joke right in my own home. That's nice. Ding bat, put a lid on it, all of yous. Now I ain't gonna let nothing spoil my day. I'm gonna sit right here like I always do in my favorite chair 
and I'm gonna watch my favorite movie on television. You mean they're running the Three Little Pigs again? <laughs> You're a meathead. A real meathead, you know that. But nothing can bother me today. I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I'm gonna sit right here, and there's only one thing can possibly screw up my afternoon. Archie, we got a guest coming for dinner. That's the thing, Edith. That's it, Edith. <laughs> but I know what you're up to. You says that someone to dinner, and it won't be any good. I'll come face to face with some dumb dopey race who'll depreciate the neighborhood. Oh, no, you are mistaken. He's as white and right as rain. All American and Anglo-Saxon. You mean I'm going to meet John Wayne? <laughs> well, almost. Edith. You actually invited a plain old garden variety American to dinner. That's right, Archie. Well, you're an even bigger dingbat than I thought you was. <laughs> if you don't invite weirdos, creeps, and oddballs, we got nobody to annoy me. And if we got nobody to annoy me, we got no plot. I'm sorry, Archie. All I did was invite the CBS censor. The censor? <laughs> the censor. The sunset, the sunset. So Don't stop this mess. We're rolling for oh, I am the censor, CBS censor. Your ethnic slams will put you on the shelf. Stifle yourself! I have a document here that puts me above the censor and above your fancy damn network vice presidents and even above... Bob Hope himself. Now you've gone too far. You've taken Bob Hope's name in vain. <laughs> Just what is it you've got? As long as you have such high ratings, I have a terrific idea. What's that? Say any damn thing you please. <laughs> the number one rating, hallelujah, for years to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All in the ratings, all Regardless of our race or color, ratings give 
Good night, everybody. God bless you. Have a happy, happy New Year. Year. Also appearing in tonight's show were Ted Ziegler, Peter Cullen, Clark Carr, and Tom Solari, Freeman King and Murray Langston, Terry Carr, and Steve Martin. Well, this is Peter Cullen speaking, wishing you a happy new year. <laughs>